Okay, next, we're gonna talk about finding the area of a triangle where we don't have any angles given. Suppose we have a triangle where all we know is sides A, B, and C, and we wanna come up with a formula for the area. All right, well, we're gonna use Hernan's formula here, and Hernan's formula is given here. We have the square root, this is S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, and your S is equal to one half A plus B plus C. So if you plug in all the information, plug in A, B, C, get the S, plug it in there, you'll get the area. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show you where this formula actually comes from. So if you're not interested in seeing the proof of the derivation, then you can go ahead and stop this video and go on to the next one, which is gonna talk about applications of using Hernan's formula. However, if you're interested, keep watching. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and, and derive Hernan's formula. What we're gonna start with is something we've already seen before. This is gonna be the law of cosines, one of the versions of the law of cosines. That's what we're gonna begin with here. Uh, so next, what we have to do is we're gonna isolate, we're gonna solve for cosine c. Uh, and to do so, we're going to subtract the c squared, move this term over, divide by 2ab, and we do all that and we get this. We get cosine c is equal to uh, this right here. Now, the previous uh, formulas that we looked at in this section so far all involved sine. We actually derived those by using right triangles. All of them involve sine. So I need to somehow able to turn this cosine uh, into a sine. In order to do that, we need to use an identity. We're gonna use this one. Sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. So we're gonna use that identity right there and I'm gonna solve for sine by uh, square rooting both sides. So I square root both sides and then this is the next place we get to here. Sine C is the square root of one minus uh, cosine squared C. Now what I have to do, unfortunately, is I have to put cosine C, this whole expression, inside here because I want to get rid of the cosine and end up getting something that it has just all A, B, and C because eventually we're arriving, this right here doesn't involve any trig function, so that's what we're trying to get to. So I need to stick all this inside there in place of cosine. Now when I do, it kind of looks messy, but this is basically what it looks like when we put that in. All this here, this whole thing is gonna be squared because this whole expression was our original cosine, so now we put that in here. Next, we need to get some common denominators and simplify this. Well, when we square the top, we just get this squared. I'm not gonna worry about uh, doing any more with that. The bottom one, when I square it, I get four a squared b squared, and I have a one over here. So I need to get some common denominators there. So when I get common denominators and put it together, we're finally gonna come down and we're gonna get this uh, as a result. And so we get an expression now for uh, sine c. So the reason why we're going through all this is because now what we'll do is we're gonna go back and use one of the formulas that we began this section with that involve uh, sine. So we're gonna keep on going here. Okay, I should mention that the reason why we got the 2ab in the bottom was originally this part was in the, underneath the square root. We had a 4a squared b squared underneath, and we did the square root of that, and that's why it came in, turned into a 2ab in the bottom. Okay, so now that we have that complete, we're going to use this formula that we've already derived previously in this section, 1 half ab sine c. And I'm going to go ahead and stick in this expression instead of sine c. So all this here replace the original sine C. Now I still have AB as part of the formula and what you'll notice here is the ABs are actually gonna cancel. We have two times two is gonna give you a quarter. And so then, because the, the, uh, the bottom part's not there anymore, now we no longer have a fraction, now we have this. Okay, so this is where we have to, uh, it gets a little bit tricky because we have to know how to do some uh, factoring the, the correct way. So we have to do factoring a couple times here. Uh, it's hard to notice this, but really what we have going on here is a difference of squares. So we're gonna factor this by using a uh, difference of squares formula. So what we get, we get 2ab plus all this stuff here and 2ab minus all this stuff inside there. So basically that's what we have. We use the difference of squares formula in order to break that down. Now, uh, it may not look obvious what to do next, but what we have to do here is we want to do some rearranging of our terms. I'm going to rearrange it and rewrite this as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus c squared, and then this part right here, I distributed the minus sign and I got all this. So technically I could write this as c squared minus a squared, um, all this right here. I could basically take a negative out of all those. Now, what do I have left here? A squared plus two AB plus B squared. That's actually a special factoring formula also. Uh, that's gonna be 
a plus b quantity squared and we have minus c squared. Now, if you take c squared and subtract all this, we're going to get another a squared minus 2ab plus b squared if we take out the minus sign. And that's going to factor into a minus b squared. So once again, we have another factoring step that we did here. So again, we have to, we have to go through this in order to do some factoring in order to get it down into this form. So let's keep on going. Okay, so what I did was next was I took the 1 fourth on the outside and what I did was I rewrote it as the square root of 16. Now the reason why we want to do that is because the 16, we want to have that go inside the square root. So now, uh, by doing so, because I made it into a square root, the square root of 16 is still 4, so that's still legal to do. Now I have both of these going to be underneath the same square root. So now I have all this. Now what did I do here? This is again another difference of squares. The difference of squares kind of comes out a lot on this particular problem. Say, so recognize it, a plus b minus c, a plus b plus c. Then I have c minus a minus b, and I have c plus a minus b. That's another difference of squares. So once again, I did factoring with the top, and I have the 16 there on the bottom, so now I have all this. So once you have that all factored with the difference of squares, then the next step is you're going to do each of these separately, um, simplify each one, so we get each of these. Now what I did was, because there's four terms, I know that 2 to the fourth power uh, is 16. So I can actually put a 2 underneath each part. I know 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's going to give me 16. So I'm basically breaking it up and putting a 2 underneath each one of those. So I have, the, uh, I have all that written out uh, like this. I've distributed the minus signs all the way through. Next thing I want to do is notice, see this part right here, a plus b plus c over 2? That's actually my s that I have here, and now it takes me down to this part here. So I put the, that part is going to become our s, so we put that on the outside. Now what about the rest of these? Well, as it turns out, each of these is going to turn into s minus a, s minus b, s minus c. Okay, let's take a look at this part right here. I rewrote that out over here. I want to show you that b plus c minus a over 2, that should equal s minus a. So let's do that. Let's do a little proof to show that that's equal to s minus a there. So that way we can come to this uh, conclusion. Okay, so here's s, a plus b plus c over 2. That's what we set up here. We're subtracting my a, and I would get common denominators with that, 2 over 2. And then when I combine that together, what happens? Well, I get b plus c and a minus 2a is minus a there. So I've shown that this expression right here is equal to s minus a. Then this one's going to be equal to s minus b, and this one's equal to s minus c. So therefore, we've gone through all the work, and now we've shown where Hernan's formula comes from. And there's no trig functions at all in this one. As it turns out, we can just put in a, b, and c, that are sides of our triangle, put that in there, and instantly that's going to end up giving us our formula, so that's the proof.